Well, we want to continue this debate in regard to the 77th Brigade and what it's been up to, this division of the army, sorry, not a division, a brigade of the army that has been involved in monitoring people who've been criticising the government, uh, who've been criticising the lockdown policy. One of them, almost unbelievably, is a former Cabinet Secretary, the former Brexit Secretary and Conservative MP, David Davis, who joins me now. Uh, Mr Davis, good afternoon. Afternoon. What do you make of this? Are you surprised, shocked that you have been targeted, that others have been targeted as a result of this? Well, I am surprised. I mean, the, uh, the, these units, I mean, there's the, 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 not just the, the brigade, there's also the Cabinet Information Unit, the Rapid Response Unit, the Government Information Cell, Research Information and Communications Unit, in everything from the Home Office to, uh, to the Cabinet Office and so on. Uh, they were originally set up, many of them, to monitor Russian intervention or, um, uh, or uh, extremists, extremism and so on, not to, as it were, control our democracy, which is what they're attempting to do. Presumably, there's a reason for gathering the information. We think it's to flag it to the, uh, flag it to the uh, platform providers and so on. Maybe it's to affect search engines and, and so on. All of these things are really in breach of our democratic norms. I mean, you wouldn't expect, I mean, the government's there to protect the democratic norms, not to, not to undermine them. And I mean, you, you, you were in the SAS. I mean, I don't think people are saying for a second, I don't think anybody's saying that you're not an absolute patriot, 100% uh, British and aligned to this country and want the best that is for this country. People may disagree with your politics, but that's the point, isn't it? It's about, it's, it, it, this is not a, a sinister element. You're not a sinister element. You're not trying to overthrow the government. You're simply someone who has been critical of and disagreed with bits of government policy. And now that is being monitored and targeted. And to me, that's the most worrying part of this. Well, it is sinister. And the, you can double up on the, the extent, the, the anxiety index, if you like, by the fact that they started doing this uh, at a stage of the COVID pandemic when they didn't understand the uh, details of contagion. They didn't understand what worked and what didn't work. So what was going on was simply an attack on people who disagreed mm. with the opinion, not the facts, the mm -hmm. opinion. I mean, Because the they didn't know the facts at that point. They didn't know the facts. And, and one of the issues they, they observed with me was I, I criticised the Imperial College um, model. You know, which is a very complicated mathematical model, which had a history of massively overestimating the impact of, of, of uh, epidemics. Um, it, was, it basically was always wrong. And, you know, they were just treating that as though it was sort of given science, rock solid science, you know, the status of Newtonian physics or whatever. So it, it really is problematic that, that a government which doesn't really know Oh, I think we, uh, David Davis has frozen there. We will try to get him back. Um, I promise you it's not any brigade within Talk TV that's uh, free freezing him. He's back now. Uh, Mr Davis, apologies. There was a problem with your line there. Uh, if you just uh, start that point again that you were making, I'd pretty appreciate that. Mr Davis, well, are you there? The, the point is very simple, and that is that... Go ahead. Can you hear Go me? Ahead. Yeah, I can. Go ahead. Uh, the, 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 point, the point is very simple. You know, the, the, you should not be undermining uh, journalists. Uh, you should not be undermining representatives of the people, members of parliament. You know, frankly, I would disapprove if it was Jeremy Corbyn or, or somebody with very, very different views to me. It's simply not right. Democracy works by difference of opinion. Uh, and most, on, on many of the cases, so the journalists they've talked about, the journalists they've uh, 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 looked at, whether it's Peter Hitchens or Julia Hartley Brewer, many of the things they have said have turned out to be more accurate than what the government has said. So, you know, I think you know, that demonstrates only too plainly the dangers of this. But there's another danger too, and that is if this sort of thing, which is after all has been done in secret, has been done without telling anybody, has been done without authorization from Parliament. Uh, if, the, if we allow this to go on, what's, what, what are they going to surveil next time? What, what's going what's to countenance uh, disinformation next time? A different view on trans, maybe? Mm. Or a different view on Brexit? Or a different view? I mean, all the issues which are highly contentious today, um, uh, it's very, very important that we allow them to be debated openly and publicly. That's what distinguishes mm. our country for centuries from most of the rest of the world. It's one of the reasons we're a successful democracy, and it really can't be allowed to stand.
David Davis, you were in uh, government, you were the Brexit secretary, uh, you've been a, a senior conservative for, for many years. How high would this have gone? Would Prime Minister Boris Johnson have uh, have authorised this when it was happening during COVID? Uh, surely there would have been very senior people, possibly even Rishi Sunak, the current Prime Minister, who would have known about this, who would have had the authorisation, the the level of information. Presumably, you you didn't uh, know about this this level. We certainly knew the 77th Brigade existed, but not this particular activity. So how high would this have gone, do you think? Well, I would have assumed it went up to uh, cabinet minister level. I mean, the fact that there are so many different groups of itself implies it was a sort of an initiative taken by different departments at different times. Otherwise, you'd have had one central group. Um, so, uh, and, and they were reporting it back to the cabinet office, at least some of them were. So uh, you would expect the, um, the, uh, the, the, the cabinet, uh, the cabinet office head, whoever that was at the time, um, you'd expect the Home Secretary, you'd expect the head of DCNS to have approved it. If it wasn't approved, then that makes it in many ways even more serious, um, because uh, because you know then then like the civil service are really taking powers themselves they they absolutely don't have. I would be surprised if it went as high as the Prime Minister, to be frank. Um, it's sort of tactic. What they're doing is sort of tactically trying to manage the conversation, manage the debate. They shouldn't be doing that, but it's not its not a prime ministerial level thing. I would be surprised if it went that high. Not say it didn't, uh, well, I would be surprised. What should happen now, now that we know the truth, the facts about this? Well, frankly, um, I wouldn't necessarily say you have to shut down the units, but you have to make very, very clear what they're allowed to do. They're allowed to monitor Russian interference in democratic action. They're allowed to monitor uh, extremism which might lead to violence. Um, those are the two big things. Uh, in every other respect, they should not be allowed to do this at all. Not not for one moment should be, they should be allowed to do this. So what will you be doing about this? You've spoken out, obviously, on this programme. You have made your views clear. But will you be seeking a meeting with intelligence chiefs, with the Cabinet Secretary, the Prime Minister? How far are you going to take this yourself, <laughs> David Davis? You must be very narked by this. Yeah, the first the first thing we will do is we'll put down a whole series of written questions to to now we know what we've got so far as to what they use the information for uh, and who authorised it. You're exactly right. We need to know who authorised it, and then at that point I'll either go and see the cabinet minister involved or, as you say, the cabinet secretary, uh, and uh, and essentially uh, seek to get it corrected. And frankly. Uh, to get the records expunged. We shouldn't, you know, we're, we're, a, we're a free... Yeah, you, should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have this on file, should you? It's like, oh, you disagree with government policy, therefore you're you're a dodgy character. I mean, it's absurd. Fr frankly, I'm proud of my opinions and proud of what I say, so I'm not worried about that. But I, but I am worried that the government would keep records of journalists at all, truthfully, and unless unless they they think they're op operating for a foreign state uh, or, or got some malign intent, I can't see a good reason for that at all. And also, by the way, you know things like um, freedom of information and uh, uh, disclosure laws and so on, if, even the Official Secrets Act, treat journalists in a special category for the very reason that they are so important to our democracy. And I want to see that properly upheld, not undermined in secret. It's interesting that journalists were actually under attack from uh, threatened with legal action by your party colleague Nadim Zahawi. He wanted them to not have information and not publish information about his uh, tax affairs. Do you think it's right that he's gone? Well, I think the, I think Sunak's made the right decision. I mean, the, uh, if you read the letter that uh, Solari Magnus published on... Pretty, this, I did read it. It's pretty damning, isn't it? It, it lays out the timetable uh, and it's quite plain that uh, declarations were not made uh, at the point of taking up jobs. Uh, it's quite plain that uh, he didn't notify, or well, certainly the Prime Minister, uh, whichever one it was, uh, at the point that he had a fine, effectively a million pound fine. And I would think that uh, most of us would imagine that a million pound fine is something you should tell your boss about. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, David Davis, thank you so much for your thoughts on this. No doubt we'll keep in touch uh, with David Davis about all the action that he will be taking about this absolute scandal in regard to him being monitored and various other people.